All right, here we go. We're live. Hey. Hi. Can you hear us? Can you hear us fine? I hope so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey everyone. Hello. Welcome again. Hello. Welcome again to the third episode of Open Projects: The Journey. The journey because it's a uh, it's a long journey. Where we are making something special, and this live stream is supposed to give you an update on what we're making. And with the third episodes, we're now basically. Uh, one month and a half in, right, girls? Yes. Yeah, Almost I think two months. So, yeah. Wow, it's been that much. Yeah. Been, <laughs> yeah. Time flies, and even even yeah. then, you know, we're still at the beginning of the journey, as as you know. Um, yeah. So I'm here with uh, Shema and Amel. My name is Chiro, uh, and with hey. us we have Carol actually from our community team. Carol, do you want to say hello? Hello, I'm <laughs> Unity in chat. You can talk to me as Unity. Yeah. Please refer Whenever... to me as Unity, please. Yes, whenever you whenever you um, yeah, you get a reply from the official Unity account, it's Carol, <laughs> our shadow uh, teammate, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Let's get started. So, first thing first, um, you know, some people here maybe it's the first time you see this uh, this show, and maybe you're wondering what is actually Open Projects, and so we wanted to give oh. you a small update or I guess a recap. Yeah. So Chiro, what is, uh, <laughs> what is open project? <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll give it with this camera here. So what is open project? Open project is uh, an initiative which we um, conceived, I guess, six months ago. And yeah. the idea was basically when we stopped traveling, you know, because of the current situation, uh, we wanted to connect more with uh, the community of creators. And we came up with this idea with um, Open Projects. And Open Projects is a, an ongoing initiative. Uh, for now, it's, it's going to last like six months where we make uh, a small a vertical slice of a game um, uh, together with the community. And this game is open source. That's why it's called Open Projects. How's it going yeah. so far, Shaman Amel? What do you, what do you think? I think? You said it all. <laughs> it's uh, it's really exciting, I would say, to see all these updates coming. And mm -hmm. I really love how we do this refresh every time to bring more people and say hello. You're not late. You can still join. So we always try to do this recap. I would say every time we start. And then I think those people who just joined might ask as well, how can we contribute to the project? How can we really get started? And maybe Shana has the answer, I would say. <laughs> yeah. So um, to contribute to this project, first you have to download the project because we have this project. Um, I don't know if we can see it, Chiro. Uh, you can see it in the repo. I guess mm -hmm. I need to, one second. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'll, so give, you, I'll we give you this one. We, Yes. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so I'll have to open um, the... Ah, sorry, yeah. you wanted me to show it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, my bad, my I bad. Thought... Okay, my no bad. problem. I think that the community will understand. <laughs> okay, so uh, first you have to go to the Git. You have to uh, download the project and um, see what we where we are right now. Um, also, you might need to go to the forums to discuss whatever you want to do in this project. Um, and you might also w want to go through the roadmap in Codex, uh, which is a, um, I think it's a game design uh, a game a project management tool a project call, management tool yeah, yeah exactly specific to game development exactly yeah so um as you can see here we have a lot of decks each deck contains uh cards and each card can be uh, an action that you can um own discuss in the forums uh try to um achieve so for example here we have the um the game setting system uh which is um, attributed to the community and if you want to discuss it you can go to the forum thread uh, by clicking on this uh, link here and you can discuss it uh, and you can see that people already started talking about it and started um, uh, having pull requests and other things so yeah that's how you can uh, participate to this project yeah. um, um, and you know great. if you want to quickly find the link I mean I think Carol is putting the link in the chat uh, yeah. But anyway, otherwise you can just Google open projects 
and then you can find the repository. And these three items that Shema just highlighted are basically the heart, the beating heart of this project. Uh, so just exactly. to recap, uh, on the repo, you'll find the project, the literal assets that you can uh, download. On the forums, you will find discussions and you can see that there's plenty of discussions that have just been updated. This is just like yeah. the last two hours, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And um, and then you see new alert. This is a new uh, discussion that just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's relentless. It's relentless. <laughs> and, then, um, and then the roadmap where you'll find all the items that we need to work on. Uh, and actually there's also a, a game design wiki, uh, which mm. details like how the game works and we are obviously updating it all the time. So in here you'll find uh, how the game works and where, where we're going basically. Uh, the roadmap, mm -hmm. right? That's the name. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And nice. I don't know if we can open the up for discussion deck. Mm -hmm. uh, we will see here that we have the game title um, because yes. we are discussing the game title. Yes. And um, yeah, and, and I think that and on this point, yeah, I would say that I, I have a big announcement for you guys today. <laughs> today <laughs> is the day where we are going to reveal the title. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you all are excited about this because I'm really excited and I don't know if it's going to be like a shock or not because I don't know what people are expecting as a title to win but mm -hmm. I would say that we have a surprise so stick around and we're going to announce this very very soon in this live stream in this episode today yeah. um, and then I wanted to maybe let's all start by giving a recap of the, what we have shown previously in the last episodes so you know, previously in the Unity Open uh, project journey, we have shown few, uh, uh, I would say, like systems we introduced and we have a lot of like updates we started to share. Of course, we are not going in details, but we want to point more in which episode you can find which part so you can easily find this uh, again. And also we added timestamps for the different previous videos so you can go straight to the point to the one that you want. And I think we can get started with a shader, the Toon shader. That was like the first big step, yeah. I would say, in the project with Chiron. Yeah. yeah, the Toon shader is the first thing that we shown uh, on the very first episode. It was basically one of the very few things that, you know, we had to show mm -hmm. on the two weeks in, into the project. Um, yeah. So we dedicated a big section in the first episode. And as Amel said, we added, um, how do you call them again? Chapters. Yeah, chapters, yeah. Yeah, timestamps to the um, to the uh, videos. to the videos. So now you can basically uh, go back to the video and, and quickly jump to the to the point where we talked about these uh, systems. Yeah. The two shader. I mean, I'm just gonna give a very very quick um, uh, kind of like back back look at what we shown. But I don't wanna I don't wanna go into too much detail. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you if you watch the video, you'll understand the logic. But I want to show yeah. you where you can find it. If you open the project, you'll see a folder called shaders. And in here, you will see uh, a shader called tune. And then you mm -hmm. can open it. I should have opened it from, from beforehand. Uh, mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's a pretty elaborate shader that actually uh, has, a, has a bunch of parts. Like it calculates the lighting uh, and then it creates also an outline, a tune outline. Uh, to recreate the the style of the of the illustrations that we have in the game, mm -hmm. uh, and just to give you an example of how this looks, uh, mm -hmm. if I take the character, which is here, that's what the shader looks like, right? So it's a yeah. full tune shader uh, that has two um, kind of like bands of lighting, so lit and uh, and shadow, and then it has this tune effect, which is pretty pretty cute. Uh, on the characters and it doesn't have it on the uh, backgrounds and this is a very yeah. simple scene I don't want to spoil but we have more stuff uh, in another uh, we'll show it to you later uh, but yeah, yeah again first episode if you go there you'll find the uh, tune shader mm -hmm. and then what else yeah. we talked about we talked about the uh, state machine uh, yeah. which is inside the game and actually if I bring back uh, the character uh, so in the in the game we introduced uh, a state machine solution which is actually made by uh, the community mm -hmm. uh, if you remember in the second episode uh, I talked about it uh, and I've shown like uh, the uh, structure of the state machine and you know again like very going very very fast this is just a very quick recap uh, 
the state machine is um, a way to have this uh, flow that goes between states. So you have characters, for example, that can be in the idle state. Uh, and as you press the controls, they go into the start walking state. Um, sorry, the start walking transition, and they transition into another state called walking. Uh, and again, this is something we've shown in episode two, I think. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, you know, if you want to recap on this, jump back to that. Uh, and again, it, this is a very interesting one because it's a contribution that comes from our uh, community. Uh, specifically, it's, uh, it's one user called uh, Daveski. But then other people jumped on the contribution and added to it. So the state machine is actually now uh, changing a lot. Uh, which is, I think, the interesting thing of this project, right? Like, we, we've shown something, for example, in episode two, and now we're in the position where uh, it's evolving. And maybe yeah. in, in a couple of episodes, we'll show it again, right? And we'll show you how it's evolved. And uh, one big uh, uh, thing, one big point for me for this project is to actually do this retrospection and uh, and look back and and see how uh, a system or a something has evolved uh, yeah. in the development of this game. Mm -hmm. um, the things yeah. that, uh, for example, the community is working on with the state machine specifically is two things. Uh, one is improvements on the UX. Because if you go to Unity, actually, uh, and I'll show you uh, how this looks uh, for now, uh, the state machine right now looks like a component that you see here in the in the inspector, which links to one of the states. And then this state links to uh, a bunch of actions. So these are the actions that the character is performing in that uh, state. And then um, it, it links to a bunch of transitions. So the transition, sorry, the idle state can transition to these uh, other states and, you know, and so forth. So as you can see, uh, there is a lot to do with uh, UX. Like this a tool is fantastic, but creating one and especially tweaking the state machine uh, is not super fast. So uh, some members of the community, again, they're still hard at work on improving it. Uh, and that's something we're gonna see in the, in the coming weeks. So again, if you're curious, uh, you can actually go right now on the uh, repo and find some uh, pull requests uh, regarding the state machine, which are uh, looking to improve on that. Uh, and they're gonna be pulled and, and merged into the repo in maybe the next week. Uh, yeah. So that's one uh, one more interesting thing that uh, is evolving. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting that because it's an open project, we see like how it really happens and uh, not, not only the final product, but more on our, like the iteration and the steps we go through. And I think this is really interesting to see and to learn from, I would say, as well. Yeah, um, I think now so too. Talking about updates on episode two, I have another update that I want to remind about, which is the event system uh, that we have worked on along with script scriptable objects. So we have made uh, this example, as you can see, of the different events. And we have shown examples where we raise events with no parameters. So it's called like void event. And an example of this was the exit game button pressed. We shown an example if we want to use uh, an integer as a parameter. And we also showed an example for the scene loading that takes two parameters, the array of the game scenes that we want to show and a Boolean to say if we want to show the loading screen or not. And again, to remind why we use this approach of scriptable objects combined with events is because we wanted to use, uh, to avoid using singletons. And then this system is much more stable and much more like avoid having those rigid connections that break things easily. So I want to go quickly to the Unity editor and I want to show what the updates that we have got. And it was interesting to show actually how we went to this update. So. After releasing this, uh, of course, some people went to the repository and one of the users pulled the project and then he put a message on the thread. Oh, so I pulled the project, the latest version, but I can't press play from uh, the main menu scene. So the problem was because we always go through the initialization scene with the current, I mean, not the current, the previous system that we had the last week. So we thought maybe at some point we want to just test some scene and when we don't want to play the whole game again. So that's really an interesting point that he raised. And we were like, oh, so let's add the possibility to press play from any button. So we added that task in Codex, in case you have noticed that. 
and we have uh, implemented that and pushed it to the repository. So now, if I go to my main menu, we can see that I have this editor initializer prefab, and this contains the script that will basically check if I press play from the scene and I don't have the initialization scene loaded, then I will load it because it's the one that contains the listener uh, to open or um, like uh, start the different locations. So now, even though I'm not in the initialization scene, I'm in main menu. If I press play, we will see that when the menu appear in the game view, we can press start. And now we have the game loaded normally. And we can do this from any scene, basically. So now we don't need to go through the initialization scene anymore. We can press play from any scene. All we need to do is just drag and drop this prefab, which is called editor initializer. And this and is- That's, that's a good point. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Amel. Yeah. I think um, creating these small tools uh, seems such like a small thing for now because you know, what does it take you to just like drag another scene and press play every single time you test? It seems like a small thing, but as we move on and we need to test uh, different scenes individually more and more, like imagine when we have like 20 locations and now you want to yeah. edit a cutscene in scene one, but also a cutscene in scene two, then you need to like jump back and forth. So it's really important yeah. to create these small tools. Uh, in this case, you might al almost call it a hack, right? Because yeah. this tool doesn't go into the game. Into the game, you will yeah. always start from the beginning. But for us, as we develop, it's really important to have a way to start from any scene at any point. Yeah. yeah. And we actually saw a lot of contributions uh, for some editor tools. And we have a section later to talk about the community contributions. So stay tuned for that one too. We have uh, some solid contributions, I would say. <laughs> and uh, other than these updates, I think in the last episode, Shema talked about the wireframe and maybe it's nice to have some refresh on that as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I can um, actually, yeah, we talked about the UI wireframing and as you can see, it didn't change much uh, because we started the discussion after this. Um, actually, let me remind you what the wireframing is. Uh, so here we have the user interface and how it will be it will look like uh, to help us see how the user will interact with the with the game so for example if we go to menu uh, we will have buttons we will have the title and the main focus animation um, animated uh, scene the thing is it will not be in this order or it will not look like this it's just um, to help us see how to interact how to go from one scene to another and also to raise some um, concerns so for example for um, the mouse uh, or um, or the joypad or some things like that so um, and while doing that the discussion that ensued is actually around the inventory and how to use it to cook and what is the cooking um, the cooking uh, system and how the in-game would look like so this actually um, was a discussion that we had with the team and with the community and we decided to have something like this so this is this will not be a game flow um this is a new thing actually uh so now that the update is finished we are i'm going to update you on the cooking system and the game design um this actually is something like um, a flow a diagram to help me um, explain to you what is the new game design so we will start with the start game here this is a start button um, sorry not start button this is the start of the game then after the start of the game you will go to discover the first location so uh, here we have we will understand the cooking mechanic. This is to discover the first location and the cooking mechanic. So first we are going to find an ingredient and then we are going to find a cauldron to cook in. And then we are going to cook a recipe with the ingredient that we have and the recipes that we already have in our um, recipe book. Then we are going to go to the next location to have a character interaction. So we are going to interact with another character uh, we are going to get a mission and this mission will not be uh, clearly stated. So they will not tell us, well, look, 
your mission is to go check something and get back to me. Uh, the mission that they will give us will be in, in the form of dialogue. So they, for example, will say, oh, I love antiquities. I have a collection of spoons. And if you find a spoon um, as a player, if you find a spoon in uh, somewhere in the world, you can go back to the first character because you know they like spoons and you can give, the, give it to them or show it to them. And for example, here the answer will be, oh, this is awesome. Uh, you're on the right path to have your own utensil collection. Here's a fork to help you. So this actually will not change the way to cook. Um, um, like you, you, you need to have, you still need to have ingredients and utensils but the thing is it's not always just droppable you can interact with a character and take and get a mission and then once you achieve a mission and you go back to the character you win a prize this prize could be an ingredient a recipe or a utensil uh, the mission could be oh go look for this or go give me um, uh, this dish or this ingredient or something. Um, so once you have the prize, you can go find the cauldron again and cook in it. And that's the, um, the tutorial phase. Then it will be um, a loop between interaction with characters, mission and prizes. Um, also, once you, you, you go to another location, you can find a critter and fight it. So this is not clearly in the tutorial, but it's still um, like it's still a new thing to understand. But then once you know it, you can do it again during the game. So you find a critter, you fight a, you fight a critter and then you pick a droppable. This can be either an ingredient, a recipe or a utensil. And um, actually, somewhere in, in this loop here, you will find a character which is the key character that you need to interact with. This character is very close to the legendary chef and they can give you um, the last uh, recipe, but the thing is they give you at first a long term uh, mission. So the thing is, it can be, for example, an old lady that knows a lot, but has memory issues and that needs uh, refreshment. So uh, you need to find something to refresh it, that their memory uh, to give you the last recipe. So once you achieve the long time uh, mission, you interact with the important character again and you win the prize to prepare the winning recipe and to end the game. Well, the vertical slice of the game. So um, this is the new um, newish game design. Uh, it's up for discussion, but for now, this is uh, what we landed on uh, by reading from the threads and uh, seeing what people are looking at um, in the cooking system, uh, etc. I think Shema, I really like how you use the the notes uh, specifically in your diagram uh, mm -hmm. because that's exactly what is kind of like a like a suggestion, right? Uh, so these little yellow notes that you left close to the notes, it's like yeah. the nodes are the flow, the node sorry the nodes the blue nodes are the flow, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the notes the yellow nodes are These ones. your suggestions. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like what we think uh, will be some example um, events we will call them yeah we can we can call them that yeah exactly so um as i said these are uh, some propositions um to improve the game the game design um i will write them in writing and we will add them to um, um one of the cards the wiki cards uh we are still discussing with people um how they how they they see the cooking system and what um, what is the the reason to have a dish? So the reason for now to have a dish is uh, to um, win a mission to achieve a mission. So for example, creating a dish could be a mission, or it could be to um, heal the player once they fight a critter. So this is the reason to have dishes, and this is a reason the reason to have the cooking mechanic. And, and, and just to clarify, um, so you just mentioned like mission, heal the player, and then obviously uh, creating a cooking something is the way to win our game oh, demo, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, of course. And what what we want, what I wanted to specify because that was discussion that was going on the forums, um, is that we can make something more. We can make the cooking system do more. 
but if we plan that it does more from now then we're widening yeah. the spectrum of the gameplay a bit too much so for now we're just keeping it a bit uh, tighter in some way and we're saying yeah. it makes you win the game it makes you progress to the game and it just heals the character for example the the dishes that you create later on yeah. if we have time you know fine let's create let's give it more uh more uses uh but as usual i'm kind of like the gatekeeper and i'm always trying to keep the project small <laughs> you know i'm like the uh it's a dictator. vertical slice too. yes exactly it's a vertical <laughs> slice and um and you know we, we have six months and uh what what would we say we're in one 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 and a half months in right yeah yeah Time so goes. it sounds like a lot of time, but uh, time is going fast and there's still so much to do. So let's keep it narrow for now. And then if we see that we have so much time to still to go at the end, uh, we'll, we'll expand the functionality and the gameplay uh, as Shema uh, detailed it on the, on the road, on the graph, I on guess, the mirror on this board, diagram. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so um, actually, I don't know if we have questions in the chat that we can um, that is a good question uh that we can somebody actually at? i saw somebody um asking if the story is gonna be linear which i might think um, you're the main the best person to answer i don't think it will be a uh, linear but they we will have um some how do you say it uh so for example to go from character to character you need to have a mission um, and you can go back to the first character or the second character, it's, it will not be linear, but at the same time, you would have, um, um, uh, how do you say it? You would have, a, a, sorry, a progress yeah. that will not be visible um, in the game. You will not have a UI for the, for the progress, but we know that we have a progress uh, for the player to go from one part to another, uh, to get a utensil, to get an ingredient, to go back to the first character or the second character, um, to, um, to win the prize or something like that. So yeah, I don't know if it's, it's kind of similar, I guess. It's kind of what? Semi-linear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you have a progress that you need to follow, but at the same time, you, you don't have to interact with the first, then the second. No, you... yeah. It's not yeah. just one yeah. choice at a time. You have like uh, maybe three options, but you do need to go through those three options and then you have like another step, let's yeah. say. Um, mm -hmm. And, and then obviously they converge towards the end, which is the... Uh, you want to show it again, sorry? Uh, the end yeah. of your diagram? Yeah, the end. So there's uh, kind of like a like a uh, unique ending. Yeah. If you want to zoom in a uh, little bit more, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So you interact with the key character. Well, this can happen um, whatever in in the game loop, and then once you achieve the long time mission, uh, you have the um, you interact with the important character again. You win a prize, and this prize is actually the recipe that or the ingredient or anything that will help you to prepare the winning recipe. So this is the end part would be linear, I guess. Yeah, cool. Do we have other questions in the chat that we want to highlight right now? Let's see. Do you have any other questions about um, the game design for now? Um, I remind you that uh, uh, we will um, put this, I think, in the other mirror board that we already shared, uh, mm -hmm. the one with the game flow um that will co that contain already the locations i don't know if we can show it here the other so mirror board this one yes ah, yes yes this yeah. one so uh i will add it here um and as you can see here it's just the locations so for example beach glade forest the town etc and um this will not uh, be a problem with the new um the new board uh, the new diagram that we will add because it contains almost the same thing. So you go from one location to the other. These are these two are the tutorial. This one is to fight a critter and then here to interact with various people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. Yes. There's actually a question Wait. on uh, somebody was mentioning the addressables uh, mm -hmm. in the chat. Uh, they were basically asking why don't you load things from addre using addressables or from resources 
and uh, somebody else replied the best way to do it would be through addressables and on addressables Shema is going to talk about it later so if you want to uh, hear how we're going to integrate addressables uh, and why uh, just stick with us for another little while yeah yeah Amel you were saying you were about to say something yeah I, I was uh, about to read one other question so mm -hmm. Someone was asking if there is any other types than monobehavior, scriptable object, or editor window uh, type of like scripts, I would say. So this is also something that we will mention today uh, about the playable asset, I think the one from Timeline Library. So um, that's also something we can show an example of uh, today, but there is much many more. So yeah, to answer the question, these are yeah, not yeah. The ones that we There's have. plenty of types, yes. Um... Obviously, the ones mentions are like, I would say, the most common, I guess, yeah. uh, and they all have their own use. Uh, we're using yeah. scriptable objects a lot in this project. You will see. Uh, That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Shall we move on? Uh, yeah. I don't think we have any questions, but still um, continue asking us and we will try to answer everything uh, yeah. later on. Um, we so... want to do a reminder maybe again that we are going to announce in time today. <laughs> You're obsessed. <laughs> yeah, for people who just joined, stick around for the game title announcement. I'm really excited about the title of the game, but because yeah. a lot of people voted and it's really interesting to see how it went in the end. Uh, and also, I think now it's time to introduce this system to you. It's not like a system, it's also a package that we are using since the start of the project, but we didn't highlight it yet in any of the streams. And I think it's like the time to talk about it, which is the input system. So do you want to tell us more about this, Chiro? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the input system, as you mentioned, is a package that we introduced basically since the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. But the way we're using it, of course, uh, it's uh, it's a bit more advanced and it's, it's going to become more and more advanced as we progress uh, through the game. Uh, so the way we use the input system here is actually uh, this way. So obviously we have the uh, input mapping that the input system comes with. Uh, and that's basically an object which allows you to define... Um, sorry, this is called the input actions. It allows you to define a series of mappings. So we have a series of inputs that the player can uh, can produce like for example moving and jumping and attacking and interacting and then through this uh, window of the input system we can map them onto different uh, controls so for example the move is mapped onto the gamepad left stick but also on the WASD of the keyboard on the arrows and so forth so as you can see we have multiple controls uh, on this note, I want to remind that for this game, we're basically going to go for both um, controls through a gamepad. So I have it mm. here. And we're going to also enable uh, keyboard controls. Uh, and the other option is going to be to be able to rotate the camera with the mouse. Mm. Uh, so once we map the, the inputs uh, like this, uh, the way we implemented them in the game is if you check the character, uh, is actually it has a script which is called input reader sorry mm. protagonist that's the name of the script and this protagonist script uh, mono behavior points to a scriptable object which is called input reader and this scriptable object as you can see it doesn't really uh, provide any option here so I'm not configuring the input here but this scriptable object is kind of like an asset that reads the input and if you check the the script that is behind this scriptable object uh, which is quite like a long script, uh, mm. you can see that it has a bunch of uh, Unity actions at the beginning. Uh, and they match exactly the, uh, all the uh, inputs that I've shown before in the input uh, actions window. Uh, so jumping and jump cancelled, attacking, uh, interacting, extra action, move, of course. And so these actions, when an object, like for example the character, has a reference to this scriptable object here, it can basically hook into these actions. And when the action is performed, uh, the character will react. So in this case, mm -hmm. this game object is able to read the input because it's watching the scriptable object, which uh, receives uh, the events, uh, sorry, receives the um, input from the input system, invokes some events, 
which are these actions here, and then uh, this script reacts to it. Uh, and I can show you actually. We actually started uh, implementing um, the, uh, let me see if this works. No, I messed up with the project. And <laughs> as you can see, yeah. So we started implementing the animations. Uh, nice. We have a few animations in the project already. Uh, for now, we just implemented the uh, idle and uh, walking. Uh, and mm -hmm. we're gonna soon start like uh, implementing um, jump and attack and all the rest. So as you can see wow. here, I can like rotate the camera and I'm actually playing with the, with the game pipe right now. Uh, nice. And then I can move around. This animation looks so good. The yeah. jump is still actually, like a, obviously very rough. <laughs> yeah, and actually someone was asking in the chat about the animation, so you showed it on time. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's um, it's really new. Like it's not actually yeah. pushed yet, uh, but nice. you'll see you'll see it soon on the on the repo. We plan to uh, push all of these assets uh, today. Mm -hmm. ah, and actually, this is also. Um, interfacing with the state machine, of course. So as, as I'm walking around, the character is moving between the uh, states. Uh, as I said before, if I actually select the character, uh, you will notice here in the state machine here, you see current state. Uh, as I move around, then it moves into the walking state. Uh, and then uh, if I jump, jump ascending, descending. So the state machine is moving between all the different states, evaluating the transitions. And he's calling the animations as well. And in fact, if he, if I go, if I dive into the state machine, um, mm. which is here. Uh, so for example, states, idle, idle has a um, this action here, which sets the is walking parameter on the animation uh, state machine, uh, which is going to make the character basically stand still. Uh, the animation state machine looks like this for now, so pretty simple. As you can see, idle. If you start moving, it goes into walking. If you press the jump button, it goes into jump. Uh, and then it goes back to idle or walking, depending if you're move or, moving or not. Uh, and then we're going to implement like the attack, the surprised animation, and an animation to talk, which is going to be triggered by the cutscenes and dialogues. Yeah. Actually, I want to I wanna call the community for something. And I'm gonna scold you for this. <laughs> this character, I mean, is still, if you see the um, character moving around, right? And then if I jump, you see that he jumps forward. But if I release the input yeah. when I'm jumping, he will like fall uh, on the spot. <laughs> I don't know how to say, like it's, I would expect him to like keep going like this, but if I release the input, he like falls vertically, and I think it looks pretty bad, right? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, you're laughing, but like I'm, um, I was noticing this, and and the the funny thing, the thing that kind of like makes me think is that nobody corrected it. Like we made a lot of progress on other things, and you know the camera feel, uh, the fact that now we can actually move the camera with the with the mouse, right? Like I can, I can right click and move the camera, but nobody uh, uh, changed this thing which I think looks horrible. <laughs> and if nobody wants to fix it, I'll fix it myself. <laughs> uh, so just just to be clear, it's like I, I move and if I jump and release the input, he falls like, you see, vertically. Mm -hmm. you, got, you get what I mean? Am I explaining yeah. it correctly? Yeah, it's I like he has no, no inertia, right? He doesn't keep going. He just like falls like a stone uh, because mm. as soon as you release the controls, the uh, the movement vector goes to zero, so he falls down like a stone. You see? Yeah. I think it's, it's like... pretty bad, and we need to fix yeah. it as soon as possible. <laughs> so if anyone, you know, if anyone makes a PR about this, uh, I'll be super. You make me happy. <laughs> um, yeah. And now talking about input system, Chiru, can you show us more about like I saw that we have the action maps in uh, the yeah. input system. So we have like different profiles depending if we are in gameplay, menu, or dialogue, right? Like I'm not sure. Too. Yes. Yeah. So if I open, uh, if I open again the uh, action map that I was showing before, so I purposely focused on the gameplay action map, uh, mm -hmm. which is the one that I was using just now. So move and jump and attack, interact, and of course some of these actions don't produce an effect yet, like interact or attack. Uh, yeah. But this is these are all active. You see, rotate mm -hmm. camera, mouse control camera. So these are all actions that are being 
uh, pulled by the input system and the input system is saying this action is happening or not. But then yes. you have the action maps, as Amel mentioned, which are basically alternate uh, controls, I guess, mm -hmm. set of controls. And as you can see, we have menus and we have dialogues. And what this means is that we have the ability to create three parallel ways of controlling the game and we can turn them on and off as we want. So as I'm playing the game, I will be using the gameplay one. If I'm mm -hmm. in a menu, like for example, if I press pause, I will go to this one, which as you can see, is just like move selection, uh, confirm or cancel. So it's pretty simple. And we, we will mm -hmm. add some something more to this, but that's what it is for now. And then we have a third mode, which is for dialogues. And this one allows us to select options in a dialogue or to confirm. So it's mm -hmm. a simplified one. It doesn't have back because you don't go back in a dialogue. It's, again, it's a pretty uh, linear uh, narration. Uh, and so by enabling and disabling these three action maps, we can move between different gameplay modes if you want. Yeah, and that's actually good because we don't need to somehow listen to all the different inputs if we don't need them. For instance, in the menu, maybe we don't need to listen to everything. We only need some buttons, so we're going to just uh, stick to that, you know, uh, input that we need for that specific situation, I would say. Yeah, and also, like, uh, if you think about it, if we had just one map for everything, then we would have to give very generic names to the actions, like jump and confirm or, you know, this kind of weird yeah. stuff. Uh, because yeah. the A button, for example, on the gamepad would be uh, jump during gameplay, but confirm during uh, cutscenes. Uh, mm -hmm. So this way we can instead have, um, uh, we can have a mapping that really makes sense. So for example, another, so if the character listens to the jump uh, button, uh, mm -hmm. a menu would listen to the confirm action and not to the jump mm -hmm. one, right? So it's, everything is super clean and then we can switch and we're always sure that, you know, characters cannot, for example, the player cannot open the inventory while he's in a, in a dialogue, for instance, because the, the, the button is completely uh, disabled and it can't be, uh, it's not even being pulled. So the mm -hmm. input system is not even listening to whatever button is mapped to, uh, for example, this action here, which in this mm -hmm. case would be the button north which is the, the white button on the gamepad. Yeah, it's pretty visual as well. Like it's really easy to put things in mm -hmm. place with the input system. I really like it so, so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been uh, pretty solid and, and comprehensive, I would say. Mm -hmm. And it allows us to mix the uh, uh, mouse, uh, keyboard and gamepad together. So it's, it's a good, uh, good choice. Also, That's it's good. out of preview, so why not? Yes. <laughs> uh, and actually, uh, this gives me the ability to uh, remind everyone that with this project, with this first Unity Open project, um, we want to stay on 19.4, right? So we're making it with 19.4 LTS and we are trying to stick with um, uh, packages that are out of preview. So we want a stable product which will allow us, uh, us to move forward without having to worry about beta, right? Uh, functionality. Totally. Yeah. Mm -mm. And I think now you mentioned in the action maps, Chiro, one of the on one of them was the dialogue. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's the time to actually show some new updates, I would say, regarding the dialogue and the cutscene system. Yeah, sure. Do you wanna jump yes. on it? Yeah. I, I would love to. <laughs> so I wanted to start with the PR, you know, it's like the meme. This is how it started, this is how it's going, <laughs> right? So this is how it started. Uh, we have these very good and I would say amazing contribution from uh, Reynaldi Satria who opened this good PR so we can see it applies to the template that we are using like a link to the forum he gave the different changes he made how to see that in the demo and he also made this YouTube link and then we have different notes with screenshots to visualize different you know elements that he added and scripts and I really like this um, this is like one of the you know uh, I like those contributions when we have images, text, and everything explained. And then we can see that we have a discussion going on. And you, Chiro, also replied a lot to this, and you made a lot of refactoring, I would say, to this method. So it started from a contribution, we improved that. And now I wanted to show uh, in the editor, maybe, before actually showing the diagram, uh, how it looks. So now if we go to the editor, you can see that I'm in this cutscene example, which you can find under scenes, examples, 
And here I can select the timeline and lock it here. So if I select another game object, I can still see it in the timeline window. As a reminder, uh, you can uh, see the timeline window from here. Wait, sequencing. sequencing. Timeline, great. And then this is uh, the small cutscene that we have. So I'm gonna disable, maximize and play and just play this. So now we have these two box colliders that are going to trigger the cutscene. So I'm going to get in one of these, which is this one. And now we can see in the timeline that we have the first line. You can see it in the debug log on the bottom saying, welcome to town. Can you open it? Yeah, we can. So, so here we can see it better. Uh, so we can see the first line and we can see the actor who said this. And now if I go back to the timeline, I'm going to press space in my scene, my game view. And then you can see that we have this new dialogue line that has been spoken uh, by the character. So we can uh, easily see this. And this is just, as I said, like a first version of the timeline uh, using the dialogue system and the cutscene system that we made. Also, Shema, I think later you will show an example with the UI so we can visualize this better. But this yeah. is just uh, the first version, I would say, to, to get started. So before diving technically into all this, Let's uh, go to the diagram uh, quickly, which we made with Shiro to explain uh, how it is uh, working here. So I wanted to start by mentioning actually that we have two parts. We have a cutscene part and a dialogue part and explain what's the difference between these two. So a dialogue is basically when we have uh, the player talking to a character and we don't have any animation going on or any camera movement. So it's just a dialogue. Right. And then at some other parts, we would like to have some camera effects or animations. And this time we would call this cutscene and it's not a dialogue anymore. And the way how this is working, let's start from here. We have a game object called cutscene trigger. So the ones that we shown in this example as, you know, this green box. Uh, so you enter that trigger, but it could be a button. It could be any other action, like anything we want. This is like uh, the trigger is just an example. So the cutscene trigger game object has a trigger collider, of course, as a component, but it also has a cutscene trigger script, mono behavior component. And this has reference to the cutscene object, which is the playable director. And from here, uh, we also request to start the cutscene when we enter that trigger. So we have a reference to the cutscene manager as well. Now, once we are in the cutscene manager, we are doing uh, these two things here. You can see that we are listening to the input. So as you remember, uh, when we showed the timeline, we print the first line, we show it, and then it stops. It waits for the input of the player to press space bar, for instance, or a button in the gamepad. So this is why we need to listen to the input reader here. And we are also requesting to display that line. So we are calling this method called play dialogue from clip which calls the dialog manager. And this dialog manager is going to request to display the line uh, to the UI controller. So what I wanted to point here is, as I said, we could have a dialog system. This means that all these could be skipped. So we only have a dialog manager listening to the input itself and then just requesting to display that line. But in case we have a cutscene, then we need to go through the dialog manager anyway to be able to uh, talk to the UI controller. So the only way to talk to the UI controller is by going through the dialogue manager. Now, um, just I wanted to mention the dialogue manager has this dialogue data, which is a scriptable object that contains the different scriptable objects of the dialogue line. So here we can see this note that says that those, uh, this data actually represents a conversation between two characters. And it can contain choice, which is really interesting. So we can have maybe at some point we need to choose between uh, pressing this button or this other button, for instance. And this will have like a branching system in the dialogue. And we could like really create cool stuff with that. For now, uh, the dialogue system supports choices, but the cutscene system doesn't support it yet because uh, it's, um, it's linear for now and we, we don't have these branches, but we also don't need it for now. In case we decide that we want that at some point, we will, of course, uh, introduce this system. Now, imagine that this timeline that you can see here is the timeline that we saw in the editor. So the timeline asset. We can see that we have two different tracks. Uh, I'm going to start with the easy one. 
which is the one we don't care much about today, but just to show as an example, is the Cinemachine track. So this one has a uh, reference, or I would say binding, uh, the right word, uh, to the main camera, uh, which is the one that contains the Cinemachine uh, brain. And then we have the virtual cameras that, uh, that are um, using this Cinemachine, they're having this Cinemachine clip that we need to use uh, to go from one camera to another. And then we have this dialogue track that contains these like different clips. And as you can see, like this clip contains the dialogue line. And this is interesting because this dialogue line we are talking about here are the same well, that we are talking about here. That means that we can use the same dialogue line in the cutscene system, but also in the dialogue system. It could be shared if we have, let's say, one sentence that we want to say in, in a dialogue and then we want to say that again in another cutscene that could be shared uh, between the two. And all this system that we just presented, uh, of course, feel free to leave questions in the chat if you have a question about this diagram or about the system. Uh, this is based on custom tracks. And this is something I think Shiro can show us more about uh, in the editor uh, on how to like really get started with somehow, I would say, an advanced use case of timeline, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. As you said, uh, so basically, um, I have the timeline here as well. Obviously, the scene is different. The timeline is quite similar. Um, but what you said is correct. Uh, the cutscene, um, the cutscene system that we want to use is going to be able to use this custom track for dialogues. And as you can see, in fact, when I press plus here, uh, you get to see it here, dialogue track. So it's a custom track that we have only in this project. Uh, fun fact, actually. Cinemachine is also considered a custom track. If you press play, you will notice that it's here at the bottom and it's just coming as part of the Cinemachine package, uh, which provides a track uh, actually, to go with Chiro, um, Actually, Chiro, we're not seeing it here because of the uh, title of this. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to remove uh, the label. There we go. Yeah. So <laughs> Cinemachine track and dialogue track. Um, yeah. Yeah. They are two custom tracks uh, from uh, for Timeline. And um, the way it works, the way you make a custom track uh, is that basically you need to define all of its parts if you want. So one part is the track itself, then you have the clips, one and two clips, and then you can have a special thing which is called uh, a mixer. And the mixer is not something you see visually, but it's something that mixes uh, two different clips. So for example, Cinemachine has a mixer. You see here when I'm blending these two uh, clips, the mixer is taking care of blending the two positions in space. Uh, yeah. We don't have a mixer because if I blend, if I, even if I tried, as you can see, I cannot blend these two clips because it doesn't make sense for us to blend two lines. It wouldn't, mm -hmm. what, what does it even mean? So we mm -hmm. don't have a mixer. Um, so if we go back to the, to the assets, um, you will find the track here in uh, scripts, cutscenes, uh, dialogue control track and you will notice it has four uh, scripts one is the track as I mentioned the track if I were to open it uh, the track it defines I don't even know if I can zoom in a little bit but um, um, yeah. well, the control track plus. defines oh no it's here sorry yeah. uh, 200 too much maybe it's okay that's good so the track defines uh, a few things, including, for example, which uh, binding type this track takes, which the binding type, as you can see here, is basically this object that you can connect here at the, at the head of the track. So in this case, we're plugging this track uh, directly into the cutscene manager. Mm -hmm. uh, and the dialogue track, uh, yeah, it, this is kind of like code that you need to, I won't explain it now, it's pretty complicated. Um, <laughs> if you want to learn more about this, you can go to uh, either the documentation or I actually published a blog post a couple of years ago on uh, specifically on customizing um, timeline. Mm -hmm. So this is the dialogue track. Um, then we have the dialogue clip, which is basically the asset that contains um, the settings uh, for this clip. Uh, which is contained within the asset uh, that contains the timeline. And uh, the dialogue clip, as you can see, is a playable asset uh, and it contains 
an instance of what is called a template of something else which is called a dialogue behavior. Uh, the dialogue behavior is nothing else than kind of like um, you could see it more or less as a, as a mono behavior for timeline. Uh, if I were to open the class, you will notice that in here we actually have these functions like on behavior play, uh, on behavior yeah. pause, and you can have functions like uh, process frame, which is a bit like the update of the timeline. So the the behavior, uh, as I said before, it's uh, it's kind of like a mono behavior. It's the one that produces the the functioning of the of the yeah. custom track. The clip instead is the one that has the data inside. And so when the track uh, you know starts, it creates, it takes all the clips and it creates all the um, uh, all the behaviors out of it. And the behaviors are the ones that play at runtime. And uh, and so if I select one of the clips, what I'm seeing here is the inspector of the clip. But then the inspector of the clip is showing me the properties of the um, of the behavior. So you can see here I have a dialog line and pause when clip ends and you see them here as options. So here I'm able to basically create, uh, you know, as many clips as I want and each one can have its own uh, options because they are stored into these assets. Um, what else, what else? And then the fourth, actually the fourth uh, script that I've mentioned briefly before, it's called uh, mixer behavior. Do you remember when I mentioned the mixer of Cinemachine? Yeah. We have a script, yeah. I just left it in, but as you can see, it's yeah. empty because right now we don't need to mix anything, but I just like left it there uh, in case later we want to produce some weird uh, yeah. behavior of mixing the two clips. <laughs> uh, but for now, again, it's actually unused by the track. Um, and that's how you customize timeline. You need to provide the scripts, uh, specifically the track one, the clip and the behavior are like fundamental. Uh, optionally, you can provide a mixer behavior and all together mm -hmm. they create the functionality of this track. They define the data that it stores and they define the object that it can bind to. Um, mm -hmm. And in this case, basically what the clips are doing, they are mm -hmm. calling the cutscene manager. Uh, Amel, you want to show the diagram again? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise switch. <laughs> Um, so the um, the clips are calling the the um, uh, from the dialogue track. They are calling the um, cutscene manager, right, which is there at the top, and they are requesting yeah. the uh, the line to the dialogue manager. So this is kind of like a passing this event forward uh, between managers, starting from mm -hmm. the clip. Yeah, That's it. Yeah. That's basically uh, the the usage of the custom track. It's not really how to create one, uh, but it's the usage that we're gonna we're gonna do for our for our game. And as Amel mentioned before, um, the, the the advantage of this is that now we can plug a dialogue line directly into timeline, right? So you can have like cameras and animations and audio, and then you can have dialogue lines. And dialogue lines are not just, you know, text that you output. I mean, for now, Amel showed how we output in a, in a debug.log, but it's gonna be much more. It's gonna be showing on screen, uh, maybe animated, uh, if we if we fancy are, doing yeah. that. And the cool yeah. thing is that by using this system, it's gonna be, the timeline is gonna be plugging inside the, um, how to call it, the, the, cut, the dialogue manager. And so if we have, any upgrade to the dialogues, then the timeline is automatically going to receive those updates because it's not just duplicating the work and redoing the same thing on its own side. Yeah, yeah exactly. And the cutscenes will contain dialogue as well, so we might just put them together. But the difference is with the cutscenes is that uh, the dialogue right. won't be um, branching, right? Because mm -hmm. it wouldn't make sense. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. if you look at the timeline, you know, obviously you can have a situation where you have like a choice and then if you make a certain choice, you jump to another point in the timeline, but it's complicated and it becomes like <laughs> a bit weird to edit because you need to remember where the choices are. Uh, yeah. So I think what we're going for yeah. here is a linear dialogue on the timeline, which obviously matches mm -hmm. the action that you have in the other uh, tracks. And then we're gonna have a more dynamic system for um, the dialogues where you can like branch and have like different choices. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the thing with dialogues is that, and because we, we are doing a game for international people and we are many people that are from many other uh, countries, we need to have a localized content. And that's when we are going to add the localization package. And the day is today. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I want to, so before we go into that, Shema, I want to, I'm yeah. curious, like, where are people from? People that are watching us? Where are you from? And actually, yeah, no, what no. language do you speak? Yeah, especially please, the languages. <laughs> please tell us in the in the chat. I'm very curious. So I'm Italian. I speak Italian, <laughs> Spanish, German. and uh, and English. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I will continue. Like Chiro, I'm Tunisian. I speak Arabic, English. Uh, French and a little bit of Danish. <laughs> Shema is learning Welcome Danish. Welcome to the Danish. Yeah, I'm learning. Say Danish. something in Danish, Shema. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you have the like floor. No or something. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I will not do that. <laughs> I will not butcher this language. <laughs> so I'm reading the chat, and very, very quickly, I read. Germany, Morocco, Spain, Israel, Hebrew, Finland, though I speak Dutch, Brazil, Argentina, Spanish, Germany, uh, Spanish, USA, English, Italy, Italian, oh. FR, I guess it's France, French, uh, yeah. London, <laughs> Scottish, Italy, Canada, Brazil, Switzerland, German, Turkish, California, English, UK, English, Brazil, here, Portuguese, Romania, Indonesia, Bahasa, Indonesia, uh, Kat Kat speaks, uh, Euskera, uh, Arabic, wow. Greece, Ita Italian, English, French, Pakistan, Finnish, Brazil, Polish, Brazil, blah, 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 Pakistan, Urdu, Canada, French. I regret it now because now I get I have to get to the end. French, Pakistan, France, Sweden, <laughs> India, <laughs> Canada. I don't Brazil, think it will Norwegian, end here. <laughs> India. If they keep typing, I will never end. <laughs> <laughs> Polish, Taiwan, Indiana, I think very it's exotic. If we say they're from everywhere. <laughs> There's somebody that says very something in Arabic. I don't know what they're saying. Sorry. Well, I didn't see it. And they so, are not stopping okay, typing. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> two, two years, years later, later, yes. <laughs> but the point is, the point is. Yeah, um, I also want to be like I'm also Tunisian. Ah, okay, true. I'm Sorry. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I think I was the only one who didn't mention that yeah. yet. I'm also Tunisian. I speak Arabic, French, English. Uh, not yet for Danish, but uh, I tried to learn a little bit Japanese and Italian, but I'm not, I'm really a total beginner. So I would say I'm more fluently in just Arabic, French, English. That's all. <laughs> but yeah, so the, so point, the point we wanted to, oh, sorry, Shem, go. Yeah, sorry. I think that people will help us uh, to translate in the other languages. Yeah. Yes. So the point we wanted to make is that, you know, uh, since like the team here and you know people here on the stream but also people on the on the repo and in the forums are so international it would be super cool to mm -hmm. translate the game in different languages so we're making a small exception mm -hmm. here right shema with this package yeah um mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> sorry i didn't hear i was reading the chat <laughs> I, I i said we're making a small exception here because we're basically allowing this package which is not out of preview yet yeah but it's pretty exactly solid right it's pretty robust, and um, I think that we can use it. You can uh, you can use it since you have like uh, two thousand eighteen point three, I think. I'm not mm -hmm. sure about the um, the the version, um, but it's actually it's a very cool package that can help you by providing you tool that you can add support for multiple languages um so and not only languages so not only english but for example um usa uh, english or um england english or i don't know maybe canadian french or france french etc so it's not only languages but also regional um uh, variant uh, so, and the thing is, it will not only allow you to translate the text, but it will also allow you to have multiple assets um, that can be in this different, different languages. So, for example, if you have an audio for a language, you can translate it and you can put the other audio or if you have a texture or anything. Um, so it's kind of very robust and I like it so much. I, I'm so excited to show it today. Um, so, yeah, let's, do you wanna, let's start. Do you want to give us a demo? 
Yeah. Um, okay. I think I have a demo here in this scene. Just one second. Um, no, not the cut scene. Um, I don't remember what I called it there. Uh, this is the one. So if I click on play here, um, yeah, as you can see, I have this um, this sprite here that if I change it to French, it will change to the other flag, to French flag. Um, I'm not sure why the title doesn't display anything, but we can see it maybe uh, later on together. <laughs> so I can say this is the French language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the game. We need to guess the language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why exactly it doesn't show. Oh yeah, so okay. Oh, um, okay. I think it's a problem with the aspect. Wow. Ah, the aspect ratio <laughs> of this, the. Yeah, this yeah. shouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah, but I can see the Laplace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, come on. Let's put it here and let's click on play again and let's try it again. So as you can see, and because I am translating the word the beach, uh, it's the beach in English. And then if I change it to French, it will be la plat. Yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a small demo. And I'm going to show you how we are going to use it in our, um, in our project right now. So I think after today, we will be merging um, this, um, this branch here. Um, it contains the, uh, it will contain the package. Um, I downloaded it from the package manager. Um, and also it will contain some localization files, like for example, the localization settings. So if we go to a uh, project setting and we go to localization, we will see that this is the same uh, information that we will uh, look at. So for example, here, this is the localization. And if I click on the localization um, uh, asset, I will see it in the inspector as well. Um, this will contain uh, different locales. Um, the locale is actually, it, it represents the region. Um, so it determines uh, the language um, you are localizing your application to. And for this, I'm only doing right now, currently, uh, it's only the English and the French. Uh, but if you want to add something, you can add all to add um, what you have in your scene, or you can go to local ge uh, generator and you can choose whatever you want to add. Um, Is there dialect? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, th I don't think so. Very interesting dialect. For the Arabic. I know why you want that. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are. Look, here, there is Arabic Tunisian. See? That's cool. <laughs> but you don't yeah, consider really that a awesome. dialect, right? Or do you? I do. Okay. I do, actually. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, so... Yeah, let's let's move. Uh, actually, I'm going to implement the localization today on the dialogue system that we were talking about. So to do that, um, let's go to our scene, the scene that you were using. Was it cutscene, I think? Yeah, cutscene example, yeah. Yeah, so in here in the cutscene, as you can see, I have the same as ML. But the thing is, I added a part, the UI part, the UI manager here. So if I click on play and I do the same action, um, let's put our timeline here and I do the same action as ML. We will see that we have um, the um, we have the cutscene and we have our dialogue that will be uh, wrote written in the UI. So here we have the townsfolk, welcome to town. And then if I skip to the other one, I will see how, now head to the town center where the legendary chef is waiting for you. So this is the these are these are the two lines that we have in our dialogue. And now if we go to the canvas, we will see that we have here the dialogue panel um, that contains that's put it dialogue panel contains the background the dialogue line in here uh it's a text mesh pro and then um the actor name in here so yeah it's a pretty uh forward uh ui and the only thing that i'm doing is that i am uh, listening to um to the dialogue uh, manager that will um 
just tell me what line to show. So here there's the sentence and here there's the actor name that I'm just going to put on the line and the actor name text. Um, until now, is it understandable, Chiro? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, good. So let's move to how we are going to put those two lines um, in a different language. So what we are going to do is that we are going to go to um, our localization file, the asset table here. Um, for our other uh, example, we have the flag table and the scene names table. So if, for example, to show you um, how the dialogue how the flags are changing uh, i'm going to open in table editor so i just click on the flags and then i open in the table editor and i will see that i have the image for the flag and it's simply selecting the asset that i'm going to show um, in that locale uh, what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create a new table collection so i'm going to do to go here and the new table collection will actually be called let's say dialogue and then I have the choice either uh, to create an asset table. So for example, if I have an asset, either a sprite, an audio, etc., anything, or a sprite table. And for this, we are going to create a sprite table. So let's create this one. And then we're going to choose where to put it exactly. So let's say the asset table folder. Now I will see that I have um, this new table here and I will add a new entry um, that I will call first line. Oh, nice. So, first line. So, this is the first line, and the first line will be, I think, Welcome to Town in English. And what will, will it be in French? So, it's ML. Yeah. Uh, bienvenue au village. Yes, Does merci. It work? <laughs> oui. <laughs> Shema, why, why do you check with Amel if, uh, for the French? Do you, do you speak yeah. French? Yeah, I speak French, but I want to check with her. <laughs> I'm like, sure. Pro, who lives three years in the house, you know? <laughs> so, um, the, second, the second line would be, I think it's uh, now head, let's put it here. So, it's now head to the town center where the legendary chef is waiting for you. And in French, it will be... Uh, Maintenant, dirigez-vous vers le centre où le is, chef is légendaire. That, is that real French? <laughs> <laughs> yes, oui, oui. I'm confirmed. Oui, je confirme. I think we're gonna like dub, love, live dub the stream, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first line, and this will be the second line here. And these are the keys that we will be um, uh, checking to um, to have the the text that we will be. Uh, uh, displaying in the in the UI. So now that we have our localization tables, um, localization table for for the dialogue, let's go and use it. So where where can we use it uh, exactly? We are going to check um, the lines, the line of dialogue. So we are going to check the scriptable object that we have for the lines here. And instead of having a sentence directly, we are going to change this uh, text to another thing. So let's open the dialogue line. We are going to change um, um, the string here that we are using for the sentence to local localize. I think it's localized string. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken. So now it doesn't uh, doesn't note because we are not using the unity engine dot localized but we are going to add it and now it recognized it we are, we need to also to change it for this local sentence here the private one and we need to remove the text area because it will not be a text area anymore it will become a localized string and let's see what that means exactly so if we go back to head to center here oh wow uh, yeah because we are using it here so let's just remove it for now and let's continue so um if we go back to lines and we go back to head to town here we are going to see that 
uh, head to center, sorry. So we are going to see that this line here, the sentence is becoming a localized string. And what that means is that if we click on string here, we can choose between, um, uh, we can choose what entry we are going to to um, um, display on the screen, but what entry will be the localized string that we are going to use. So um, I think that head to center is the second line. So let's choose the second line. And if um, so, if we are we open sentence here, we we see that we are using the table collection dialog. Uh, the entry name is the second line. And in English is this, in French is this. And if we need to change it even from the game, even from the scriptable object that we are working on, this change will reflect on the table that we are working on. And we can add either another table or another table entry, etc. So yeah, it's 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 very awesome, I think. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's, yeah, I really yeah. like it. Let's do this uh, also for the welcome and we are going to choose the first line. And what that means is that for now, we are not going to pass a string directly. We are going to pass a localized string. So let's check how how we are going to treat that um, that string here. So if we go back, actually, I think I'm going to go back to the test that I did with the localized string. Um, if we check our text here, we will see that uh, in addition to the text mesh pro, we have a localized string event here. And this localized string actually um, uh, takes, so for example, if we choose uh, beach, um, takes this uh, the, the string reference and add it, um, sorry, changes the text here, changes the text that we have in text mesh pro. So let's go back to our dialogue. The cutscene. And to have this component, it's pretty simple actually. We don't even need to add it uh, directly. So let's go to the dialog line and we just click on these three buttons here. And you will see that there's localize. And if we click on localize, That's cool. we will I add. Didn't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will add uh, the localized string event, and this is actually this will be uh, the event uh, the the component that will listen to when we change um, the language or when we change the region, when we change the local exactly, and um, it will change it um, change the text that we have here. So yeah, it's kind of cool actually. <laughs> so. Um, we are not going to use the scene name. For now, we are going to say this is none because the string here that we are going to display will be changed through um, the code, through the dialog UI controller. So let's go back to the dialog UI controller and let's. we are not going to change the text Mesh Pro UGUI. We are going actually to change. Um, so to do that, we are going to um, be using unity engine um, yeah dot localize mm -hmm. uh, and we are going to be using a component this component is the one that we have in the scene which is the localize string event so this is the 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 component that we will be uh, using, we are going to actually change the string reference. So if, let's go back to our scene and I will show you directly here. So we are going to be changing the string reference here. So if we open um, We're going to get it from the dialogue line. And in this dialogue line, we will have the sentence. It's the same. So these are properties but, of the scriptable object, right? Exactly. But now the sentence is not a text anymore. It will be a string reference. Um, sorry, a localized string that we will uh, assign to the string reference that we have in the line text. And that will allow <laughs> so, this localization system to pick the right entry in the table. Exactly. And okay. we can test it directly from, let me just open again the editor. 
it's probably compiling at this point. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, if we test it again now, if we click on play, we will see that we have a GUI here that we can change from English to French from the locales that we have. Mm -hmm. And if we enter here, oh, it's not working because we didn't assign it uh, through the inspector. So we just drag and drop it here. Play again. We have this first uh, this first line here that we can change to French even when we are in play mode. And wow. we will continue to the other one. So this is the second line and we can change to English. That's quite cool. Good? That's pretty yeah. pretty cool because then um, basically this allows us to not need to, for example, reload the game if the language is switched, right? Like that's a typical case sometimes uh, yeah. uh, with some other uh, localization systems, especially when you build one from scratch, it can be really hard to actually refresh the whole UI. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes games require you to restart the game or to at least like exit the menu and re-enter the menu. And with this system, uh, as you just shown, yeah. uh, we could basically potentially switch the language midway through a cutscene and even with the text on screen it will just like uh, jump to the next uh, to the other language is quite cool uh, yeah nice nice like it so, so uh, the other thing that i wanted to say here is that the localization package and that's uh, what you said earlier chiro that i'm going to talk about addressables so the localization pa package is actually built on top of the addressable uh, asset packages so it actually means that by default unity stores localized as uh, assets as asset bundles um and yeah so yeah, I'm, we're using the addressables here. That's cool. So it means that basically um, you're never like loading all the assets for one specific language at the same time, but they are loaded and unloaded as you need them, right? I think that you can do both and um, it depends on when you what you choose. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. And so just to... Um, uh, just to kind of like recap. So basically we have these scriptable objects, which are the lines of dialogues, right? Mm -hmm. They yeah. contain a reference to a localized string, is it called? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Then the timeline has a custom track, which takes the scriptable object and passes it to the cutscene manager uh, together with the localized string, right? And then the localized string goes all yeah. the way to the dialogue manager, which displays yeah. it on screen by finding the right reference in the table of localization. Did I get it correctly? Um, I think that what you are passing is a localized string mm -hmm. and the localized string is actually um, the string reference that the component, the localized string component will use. Mm -hmm. And it uses that to find the right, right string, the right which text. is the final text uh, exactly. inside the table. And then yeah, you can yeah. always like switch that and it will update it, um, update it in real time. That's mm -hmm. cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. Shall we look at some questions in the meantime? Yeah. Because we have a lot of questions in the chat, actually, that mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, recognize. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. Did you see any, any question that was interesting? Somebody was asking if we, if we want to translate uh, the names of the characters as well. It's a, it's a um, possibility. Yeah, I think it's possible. It's very possible. Like we do the same for the actor name that we did with the dialogue line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because obviously that's one of the characters called townsfolk. So that's uh, that's a possibility. Um, mm -hmm. How would you translate it in French? I'm actually asking the chat because somebody was mentioning. How would you translate like townsfolk in French? Actually, I think. Um, it's villageois or citadel yeah. or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, let's see. And this is a right answer. <laughs> yeah, somebody replies villageois. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and somebody yeah. says, what about node based dialogues? 
as in if we're gonna have them or how do you make them because we will have some kind of dialogue branching uh branching. the scriptable objects that contain a dialogue will have a kind of like an exit option mm -hmm. and it will have more than one so you will be able to create branching which means that when you see the dialogue on screen you will then be able to um, select an option and that will take you to another branch but this has this is not connected to the translation the translation is just going to be like the final kind of like the final string that gets displayed on screen mm -hmm. and um Somebody's asking, Jason Story is asking if um, if you're going to be populating the scriptable objects manually. Uh, good question. That's a good question. Um, and he says, uh, wait, it seems you will have an easier time crowdsourcing, populating a shared Google Docs, uh, Google Sheets Docs uh, for lines and creating an importer. Uh, I think the, um, what's the name? Localization package. The localization package, yeah, it uh, supports importing Google Sheets. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're gonna look into implementing that as a next step. For now, we just wanted to like bring the package in to allow people to start uh, playing with it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, yeah, we're gonna probably do the translations as a shared Google Doc that everybody's gonna be able to vandalize. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> uh, and then we're gonna look into the importing uh, and bringing these strings into Unity and putting them into a table. And, and then from there, we're going to link those uh, table entries to the scriptable object as Shema just uh, demonstrated. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of stuff that, I mean, we can see if we can automate that. Uh, but obviously, there's a little bit of uh, um, composition of all the table entries into like dialogues and lines and everything, which uh, is more of a design uh, decision rather than just like importing strings in mass. Yeah. Um, so now when, when, um, I think that when anything, any system is using, uh, square, uh, sorry, strings, um, they need to take in consideration that they could use the localized string and then we are going to create a table for it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, David Rodriguez asks, would you not give the characters names, uh, rather than just uh, name them all townsfolk. Yeah, yes, of course. Like, they're not going to be named townsfolk, don't worry. Uh, that's just <laughs> a temporary name to refer to the character because the, all the townspeople are going to be a variation on that 3D model and they're going to be dressed differently with different accessories. But right now we only have, like, one uh, avatar, if you want. But they, they're going to have names and, and uh, uh, a role in the story, if you want. And somebody else was asking yeah. also, Shema, this is for you. If the lo localization system uh -huh. supports parameters, variables, plurals, and other localization stuff, yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Um, I think you can you can check it on the documentation because it's a very long uh, uh, document that you can read about. But yeah, it does. It has a smart. Um, I think it's called smart strings. I think I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. it does support yeah variables for sure. So you can inject uh, variables inside localized strings and place them differently depending on the language. Uh, Miley is also asking a, a similarly related question where she asks, mm -hmm. uh, how would you handle pluralization in different languages and when certain languages have genders assigned? So the localization package is ready to support all of these. Um, it's a very, very smart system, actually. They did a yeah. lot of research. You know, it's not just done from the perspective of one language, because obviously then you you don't account for the the specifics of other languages and every language works in a different way. Uh, yeah. The only thing that I'm going to say that maybe is going to be challenging is uh, non-Roman alphabets. Uh, we're going to look into that because that requires a little bit of more investigation. We have different uh, fonts that we need to import and we need to find the right font. And then obviously there's the question, I mean, Shem and Amel speak Arabic, so you know, Arabic works yeah. uh, right to left, it's not left yeah. to right. Uh, so that's yeah, another not topic. Like the ligatures between the, the letters, so yeah. Yeah, there's the ligatures, yeah. So letters have to be connected, otherwise the language doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna look into that. But for now, we put, uh, as Shema shown, we've put only 
English and French, just as a, as a reference, just to show you how the system works so you can get mm -hmm. familiarized with it. And then we're going to start introducing the other languages. So please don't make PRs for new languages. They're going to come, <laughs> yeah. but not yet. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, will, we will create a, a Google document shared. <laughs> yeah. This is really exciting. I really love this package. I would say this is on my top three favorite package in the project. Ah, come on. <laughs> now it's your top tier package. I didn't yeah. even know you had a leaderboard of packages. Uh... <laughs> my top three is now localization just made it in. So thank you for this overview, Shem. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. <laughs> so, yes. And I guess maybe again, we, we can remind people about the title that is coming very, very, very <laughs> soon. And I would say really, really <laughs> soon. <laughs> Checking if um, people have more questions in the chat. Um, do we have to, do we need to specify all the sentences in the localization package or it will translate everything automatically? No, no, we need to specify them all. It won't translate anything. Um, yeah, I was actually... copying and pasting from a, from an Excel sheet, just so you know. You were copying and pasting. Yeah, yeah, I were, I were copying and pasting the the two dialogues, the the two lines. Ah, you mean now for the demo? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe that just was confusing because yeah. yeah, exactly. That that's that's why. <laughs> David Rodriguez says that he's personal leaderboard is input system, cinema machine, and localization. Okay, <laughs> fine. It's almost the same, I would say. <laughs> nice. We have um, more packages coming have... in, actually. Sorry? Yeah. Do we have other questions for the dialogue system maybe earlier? Because I don't think we answered those. Do hmm. we have them? I actually like... wanted to reply to a question from somebody before called Lion. I hope he's still uh, or she's still uh, connected. They were asking if they have to learn all the systems before trying to contribute to understand the process. I mean, you need to understand, obviously, you know, what's going on in the game. Um, you don't need to learn all of the systems. You need to learn the ones that you're going to be touching, right? The ones that you're going to be contributing to. And we're trying to keep systems separated. Uh, but obviously that's impossible. As we progress into the game, the systems are going to be interconnected and, and speak with each other. For instance, uh, Amel just demonstrated how the cutscene system that relies on timeline can speak with the dialogue system that is something that concerns the UI. So we're going to connect them together. Um, but what I want to say is that for now, if you open this project, the project is still, I would say, simple enough right now. Mm -hmm. But it's getting more complicated and so we're studying ways to provide entry points to the project and what should they be what do you think they should be i mean if you want to voice your opinion in the chat let's say that you you're downloading the um the project right now and you where would you want to find a guide on how the project works yeah, yeah that's a good question I think it's interesting to get uh, feedback from the community about this and how they want it to be so we can consider the different alternatives, I would say, or solutions that will make it easier also for you to get started with the project, no matter at which step, I would say, you join. So, yes. Wagner, Wagner Ferreira, uh, he's yeah. one of the contributors of the state machine. He's saying that uh, he's touching the state machine without no, while having no idea what the dialogue system is doing. That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's possible for now. That's yeah. A good point though. Like sometimes you don't need to know everything about the project, but sometimes just like during the stream, even if you are a level designer, you would want maybe to know more about the scene loading system, like out of curiosity or more to understand like the overall architecture of the project without necessarily knowing the details or like the technical, you know, heavy stuff that the code, for instance, you don't really need to know about that, but it's always good to have an overview of how things are working together so you can somehow like do those easy drag and drop or call the events even though you don't need to code that i would say with script somebody suggests uh, a readme that links to a website okay mm -hmm. um uh, okay <laughs> um github wiki says david rodriguez 
Um, what I, I would think say. It's the best thing. Sorry. I think it's the best thing to have a wiki on Git. I think we will have both. So, yeah, we constantly. Mm -hmm. So one idea is to have a, the wiki on GitHub to uh, be kind of like the documentation of the project. Mm -hmm. And maybe we will have something within the project so that if you download it and you don't even see the wiki, then it will direct you to the right spot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's uh, something we are looking into. And uh, <laughs> somebody in the, in the chat just called me Circo. Thank you. Yeah, I just <laughs> You know that Circo means circus in Italian. That's not my name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jason Story says, I'm a big fan of GitHub pages as a knowledge base. Okay. Noted. Um, Interesting. The challenge with these things, you know, and the reason why we didn't do it yet is because obviously uh, you need to. Do you still hear us? Shaman Amel, I don't hear you. One second. <laughs> All good. Everyone is hearing us. Great. Yes. For some reason, you're, uh, yeah, you muted automatically. So, but I think we're back. Yeah, I think everyone is hearing us. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, yes, I, I panicked exactly. for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you hear me, guys? Because I think someone said I'm muted on the chat, just to make sure. You were for a second. You, both of you were muted. Uh, okay. The, so I guess yeah. we are all back. I but guess. you should. All, we should all be back. Great. Good news. <laughs> Great. So we were saying, I think um, we don't have any other questions in the chat. So maybe we can. Um, um, yeah, maybe on. I can talk about the community contributions, actually, because of course. Oh, yeah. that's like my favorite part, I would say. I'm happy yeah. to do it. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about the community contributions that we have. So we actually merged a lot of PRs uh, in this last two weeks since the last stream. Uh, I can show all of them, of course, but you can see that in the PR list, you can see which ones are closed in the GitHub. But I'm going to highlight a few of them uh, today and show that. So now if I share my screen, you should be able to see uh, my GitHub. And here we can see that we have opened a new white boxing branch. And the reason why we wanted to do this is to allow you guys to add your contributions that are related for uh, different locations by doing the white boxing um, here on this branch. And we can see that we have this first PR. And this PR was made by It's Liviosa on the forum and uh, Zold helped to put this uh, here in the GitHub. So thanks a lot for both of you. Uh, so this has been merged. I will show it in a moment in the editor. I also wanted to show another contribution for the white boxing from Smurjo. So thank you both for this and let's see this in action. So this is the first contribution for the white boxing that we can see. Um, of course, as a reminder, you guys can use ProBuilder and PolyBrush. And in case you don't know what they are... And, and not terrain, know, right? And not terrain, yeah. Obviously. And I just wanted to show this in the thread, just how to get started with ProBuilder and PolyBrush. Uh, so Grigory, our friend from Unity, left those links for you in case you want to see how to get started. But Shiro, yeah, you raised a very good point of uh, the fact that we are not using the terrain. And uh, I would say we have two main reasons uh, for that. For, first is because we don't have really a way to make the tune shader work in the terrain. And the second reason is because terrains are a little bit heavier and because we want to optimize the game. And even from like performance point of view, it's uh, better to avoid using terrain for now. And uh, so that's why we decided to go for ProBuilder and PolyBrush. Uh, as two tools, um, and I would say solid tools actually, to um, create the gray boxing or the white boxing uh, for the different locations in the game. So this one is for the beach scene. Uh, if I'm going to press play, and let's see that. So now we can see that we have the, the new character here. 
and I can move around with the camera. Uh, I do this maybe to the left. And the good thing is with the gray boxing, of course, it's nice to try the feeling of the game and see how it is and if we really want this to be this way or not afterwards. So this is just a small example to show you how it is. And it's Livios actually made a video that we have showed in the previous episode. And I wanted to show the other contribution that we have also here. It's in another scene. So this is the second contribution. Let me press play. And now we can see our character here. And let's move a little bit in the scene. And then again, um, you can test that to see how it looks like. It's both of them are available in the Git repository. Uh, what I would recommend is to create a new scene every time you want to create a new white boxing version, because if you edit another one, then we would probably have some merge conflicts and this is something we want to avoid. So please always try to duplicate the scene if you want to get started from this one or this other scene that we have. So feel free to do Ctrl D or right click and uh, copy paste this like to duplicate it and get started from that and iterate uh, on it. So this is for the first, I would say, uh, level design, gray boxing, uh, white boxing contributions. Uh, we also... It looks very nice. People say that we should ship it already. <laughs> <laughs> Not of yet, course. I would say, but yeah. Hold <laughs> so your horses. <laughs> Another contribution that I wanted to highlight is the spawn location. Uh, this is also from Jay Mercer. Uh, so this tool will allow you to place the spawn location at the place where you click. And this was like the first contribution. And then we can find that we have another PR that uh, builds on the top of this other PR too. I'm going to just show the files changed to make it easier. You can see that it's like really small improvement, but this makes uh, the editor tool much more uh, smooth. And we are going to see this when we test it. But I just wanted to point that sometimes these small contributions can be really nice and important. So feel free to open uh, those PRs if you feel that uh, they are right to do. Um, so if I go to my spawn system and I go to my location here, spawner, you can see that I can place a mouse cursor. And now you can see this preview, uh, this cube, and I do right click. And now this is like my new location for the spawn. And uh, as you can see, it's super responsive wherever I go, uh, thanks to the improvement that we also got uh, from both users. And we also uh, noticed that um, this is the location only appears if you have the gizmos enabled. So please make sure it's enabled to be able to preview this. Uh, so this is a small improvement. And another last one that I want to show today is the simple mouse based camera controls and you might have noticed that for now we are using the keyboard to change uh, the camera uh, view so let me just press play and show this new update this was a request from the community actually i never considered uh yeah. using the mouse at the beginning because the game was supposed to be uh gamepad uh based but uh they said no and you know, yeah cheer it's <laughs> fine, <laughs> fine. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so now if I press uh, right button of the mouse, you can see that I can zoom in and zoom out by moving forward and backward. And we can also move around the character this way. And this is really cool. So now we can do this. We can easily move around like a real game, I would say. <laughs> the graphics are so beautiful. You are spoiling us today. Do you oh, hear the sound? Wait, wait. <laughs> Do you hear the sound? No. <laughs> it's, it's the sound of my joystick. The gamepad. No, I'm joking. I know. I know that. Um, I know that. Uh, not everyone has a joypad con connected to a PC, so it doesn't make sense to uh, make a game that people can't enjoy. Um, you know. So I'm. I'm bowing to the will of the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think 
cool so we can like test this in different platforms and uh yeah so that was the camera contribution uh that was adding the camera manager here if we do just double click to quickly show the script um so we basically have the different methods that will allow us to um see i would say uh disable for instance and enable the cursor when we are looking around the character etc so these are like the new uh, updates i would say that we have uh, when it comes to the mouse control and of course uh, this was also added in the input uh, system so the mouse is also supported and actually we this this means that um we have a lot of discussion going on regarding the menus right because we want to control the menus with mouse and, and uh, sorry, with keyboard and gamepad, but uh, we also need to support mouse because people expect the cursor. So we're going to have some kind of the latest news because that's what's been discussed uh, on the forums right now is that we're going to have a hybrid menu system where you move the, the selection, for example, with your with your gamepad or with your keyboard. But as soon as you move the mouse, then you have like a pointer and you can like click on things. Uh, so it's gonna be a hybrid menu, which is gonna be challenging somehow, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna make it. Yeah, we we are gonna no, make no. it. We have the community with us. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few people really dedicated. They're they're putting out a lot of stuff actually, a lot of uh, uh, super cool improvements uh, with the, with the speed that, that like we can't keep up uh, approving them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, now let's look again to the scene, Shiro, but I would say we have seen this a lot of time, like this prototype scene. And as you can say, you know, that's like a, a lot of uh, very, very good quality. And the comments, they all appreciate how amazing these assets are. <laughs> so maybe it's time, you know, to give some like refresh and update on the graphics. And I think you have something for us today, Chiro. Yeah. So, um, yes. I, oh, yeah. I basically... Much better already. <laughs> I, uh, I actually titled this section of the live stream The Big Merge uh, yeah. because that's what we're going to do. Uh, we have um, kept the art assets on another branch for a while, but now it's time to like put them together. We want to start like um, at least have some graphics, something to play with visually. Nothing too big, uh, but as you can see, we have a lot of assets being made by uh, some contractors that we're working with, and this, these are going to be defining the the graphic style of the game, as we said many things, many times, sorry. Um, so obviously we have the character, which has a bunch of animations already being made. Um, and I think I can show you some of them. Uh, so you've seen me control the character before. He has an idle animation. Uh, he has a jump animation. He has a cane uh, attack. Obviously he's not using the stick right now, but he has this cane attack. Uh, he has a surprised animation where he actually opens his eyes and there's a little bug right now. <laughs> the eyes, like, of course, because it's up. live. <laughs> no, I knew about the bug. Uh, uh, the artists are fixing it right now. <laughs> uh, so he loses his eyes. Um, and then there's one where he talks. So he's, do he's doing this. So this is going to be used in cutscenes and dialogues. Mm. Uh, and then there's one, yeah, obviously the walk animation, the walk cycle, right? So many of these animations are like, these are actually blockouts. They are not even like the final quality, but they're they're progressing. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be building the full uh, state machine mm -hmm. with this. Uh, then we have his uh, trusty pouch that he's gonna be wearing on his back. Uh, he has a knife to collect things, to collect ingredients. Uh, and then he has the walking cane, which is here, which he uses to, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, support himself Walk. while walking <laughs> and uh, also to attack. Yeah. Uh, and then he has the lantern, which is the one that's going to contain uh, the little phoenix chick, which is here, uh, which is being rigged right now. And then we have the, uh, this is the sitar of the bard hair, <laughs> without the bard nice. hair yet. Um, then we have the townsfolk, uh, we have a masculine version, let's say, and a feminine version. And basically the idea with them is that we're gonna dress them up with accessories so that they look different from each other and then we can create characters. 
uh, and the accessories are mostly gonna be made by the community so we need the help of the community to to make them um, you know hats or like uh, small decorations around the neck or anything you can you can imagine like uh, bracelets uh, and so forth and obviously we can do texture texture swaps so to, so they can like wear different uh, uh, different clothes. dresses I guess yeah different clothes we have a rock critter yeah. Uh, which is here and also has a, bun a couple of animations. So he has a, oops, into the camera. He has an attack animation and then he has a walk cycle, but they haven't been connected into a state machine yet, but we're almost there. And this is what we have in terms of characters for now. And then we have a bunch of objects, as you can see, like the fern plants, uh, bushes. Uh, we have uh, torches. And kind of like mm -hmm. bamboo made uh, stumps and fallen trees uh, we have a bunch of different small decorations for the ground uh, mm -hmm. we have bamboo canes uh, we have a bunch of rocks here to construct the scenery obviously trees and palms and uh this is actually the um the campfire the yeah where yeah. the uh the What's it called? The pig chef will will be able to cook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have like smashable uh, pottery bases, uh, and we have a chest coming in as well. So there's a lot of uh, graphic assets that are being made. Um, and then on the side, actually, we also have some effects being made. So this is a um, water shader made by Dick Mendra, one of the members of the community, uh, which oh. actually has been announced. So this is also a collaboration. Uh, if you go on the forums, you will notice that a uh, user called Trevise has made uh, improvements to this water shader. So we're getting this water shader with like foam and uh, depth uh, effect or something. This is great. Um, which now looks like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's really, it's really, really cool. And uh, we're going to be merging it uh, soon, soon enough. In this, yeah, awesome. uh, all of the, part of this, uh, what I call the big merge. And actually, <laughs> in terms of effects, before I switch away from it, we also have another effect from uh, another user called Reclol on the forums. Uh, and this is an effect to create like a um, disappear effect when you burn something away. Oh, so he awesome. tested it on the cane. Of course, you're not going to burn the cane, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's the that's the idea. Wow. And also... Um, I love it. Trevise from before, he's working on a fire uh, system. System, I shouldn't even call it a system. It's more of an effect, particles and, and shader uh, mm -hmm. to simulate fire. So we're going to be merging all of these and we're going to be putting it into the, the big merge. And as part of the big merge, I actually um, remade a couple of uh, scenes. So one of them uh, is called Testing Ground Small and it's the one you saw before. And basically... If you jump on this uh, version of the game and your computer is not that powerful, you can use this scene to just test the character controller. You know, if I press play here, the character gets spawned. So, uh, no reference exception. I don't know what, what that is. Ah, it's the timeline that I put during the live stream. <laughs> uh, yeah, ignore the timeline. Uh, but you can use this scene to um, to test the character if your computer is not like super powerful and you want to, you know, keep it light. Also, obviously, like play mode is gonna be entered faster. Uh, or you can uh, go to this other scene, which is called testing ground, uh, which is a bit more of an elaborate uh, scenario where you can like see a little bit of uh, assets, you know, interact with each other if you want. Of course, it's still very crude. Uh, I just used like poly brush to uh, scatter a few assets on the ground and create like a small forest. Uh, but this is kind of like a, like a, again, like a testing grounds that you can use uh, if your game runs decently well, you know, mm -hmm. if your computer runs decently well. Yeah. So in here, I you'll be able to... I have a question, Yeah. Sure. about this, um, actually, because I see that the, uh, the pig is animated, but are we going to use um, another package for the animation? You're talking about animation rigging? Yes. Yes. yes, so the, that's I a very guess. good question, Shema. Thank you for that. Uh, 
Actually, one request that I asked the artists, uh, if you notice the character, for example, when now he plays the idol animation, uh, he's, and again, this is a block out, so it's gonna improve, but like, I asked them to make these animations uh, without the walking cane. So he's basically able to do, to perform all of the actions like walking and um, idle and jumping and uh, talking without the cane. And then we're mm. going to be using animation rigging to uh, add the cane to the character so that his right arm, the, the arm that you see here uh, in the front, mm -hmm. is going to be holding the cane. So with the animation rigging, we'll be uh, modifying the position of this uh, hand uh, to hold the cane uh, so that we will modify the animation, for example, for walking. And he's going to be, you know, holding the cane and using it to walk. Um, and, uh, and this basically allows us to have two versions of the animations for the price of one, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, where he, he could, we could basically, for example, uh, have the cane during regular gameplay, but then in some cutscenes, maybe he puts the cane down and he, you know, he speaks with both hands uh, or <laughs> when he cooks, for example, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm thinking of an animation where he plants the cane into the ground and then he takes the ingredients with two hands uh, and cooks. Uh, and we're going to be using yeah animation rigging for that. So we're going to introduce the package in, inside the project soon. Awesome. And that's it. That's the big merge. It's coming to your uh, GitHub great. repos uh, very, very soon, probably tonight. I just need to uh, literally push it uh, to main and double check that everything works because obviously the bug yeah. is always behind the, the corner. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's be on main branch indeed because someone asked in the question uh, the question in the chat if the big merge is going to be in another branch no I, uh, it's it's in so another then... branch on my machine for now but i want to put it in main because i want everybody to be able to quickly grab the assets and not having to do tests you know with the state machine for example in the in the ugly environment prototyping environment that we had yes please we are done with <laughs> with the prototyping environment um so now <laughs> maybe let's have an overview of uh the different tasks uh, that we have made so far and maybe reveal new tasks i would say right yeah definitely so um we're gonna basically go back to um to the roadmap that shema yeah. showed at the very beginning of the stream and actually this episode <laughs> uh we really got to this episode like uh how can i say we were preparing things until today basically uh the things to show because there's <laughs> so many contributions and you will notice because if you go to the roadmap number one the code deck is almost empty like there's a few things i yeah. need to refresh some tasks but there's very little uh planned for now because everything has been done we merged so many prs um and then uh, number two, if you go to this deck here, to the live stream one, which is the one where we are today, and you open it, you will see that we've done a lot of things. And many, many things, the ones with the blue uh, icon are done by the community. Among them, you see that we have the water shader, as I mentioned before, uh, collaboration between Dick Mendra and Trevise. Uh, we have the audio system has been merged in, uh, the timeline track and dialogues that Amel shown. Um, we have an object pooling mechanism by Dave Rodriguez. We have a bunch of uh, bug fixes. The little ones with the ladybug icon are bug fixes. So you can see how many bugs have been found and fixed by the community, which is super cool. Uh, we have a few editor tools, like the one that Amel shown the, to place uh, objects by uh, Jonathan Mercer. And so many, many things uh, in this release, if you want. Uh, and, uh, and and now we need to basically create new tasks. So, yeah, live. Uh, let's <laughs> enable the hidden deck that I have here. And I have a few t new tasks here. Um, again, this is going to be finalized uh, soon. Like some of these tasks have uh, very little uh, information inside. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's why I wanted to show them live. So starting with this one, accessories for townfo townsfolk, as I said, uh, we need to basically dress up these uh, characters here, which I have in the art showcase. 
So the townsfolk, we're not going to have many models. We're going to have just like a couple of models. And then we need to accessorize them. We need to customize them to make them unique. Uh, obviously, we have other unique characters, but if we want to populate the town, we need to make this model a bit more special. And so mm -hmm. one thing we need to do is to start modeling, literally, some accessories for the townsfolk. And I, I'm really curious to see where this is going, hopefully <laughs> in a good direction. Uh, so I'm going to put this one into the 3D modeling and I'm going to assign some priorities later. <laughs> then we need... We need we, we one thing we should do is branching in dialogues so right now the dialogues they don't allow branching yet uh but we want to make sure that the data mm -hmm. type supports branching that the dialogue manager can pick up and then uh, produce these choices on screen that the player can then select so i'm gonna put branching in dialogues also in the coding uh, pile in here then we have two different very interesting tasks so i've shown you that we have the rock critter the stone critter which is one of the enemies in the game and we're making animations for it uh, but we decided to outsource if you want slime critter and plant critter so we're not gonna make them ourselves because people are you know we had many requests from people they want to start doing something more involved uh, slime critter is super simple uh, if you go to the game design wiki you will see the designs in here. Slime critter is this one. It's basically a ball of slime that like uh, attacks the player. And yeah. the plant is this one. So they're two relatively simple models. And at the same time, they can be, you know, with the right animations, they can be infused with a lot of character. Um, so this is the concept art that we have. Um, I think there's another file linked here with a little bit more ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically, that's the concept art which you can find in the Game Design Wiki. So I'm going to take these two cards, one and two, and I'm going to put them into the uh, 3D deck. And again, I'm going to provide more information on that because obviously they're pretty empty right now. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And when I, when I talk about these models, I'm, I mean modeling, texturing, rigging and animation. That's what we need. Yeah, and I know that there were uh, many people that wanted to participate in the modeling and in the 3D. So uh, now that we have the basic graphic, we know where we are going. So um, yeah, these are these are cool new um, uh, cards to add to our deck. Yeah. Yeah. Then I have a personal request. Uh, <laughs> it would be nice to have a, this should be really like an editor. Uh, script or something but it would be nice to have a tool to replace game objects with prefabs this is a classic need um, when you for example have yeah. placed I don't know 50 trees or you have placed 50 bushes and you want to replace them with trees that you want to just select them and replace with another prefab um, so this is kind of like a very low priority yeah. task actually I'm going to assign the priority yeah it's no rush but you know if anybody wants to measure mm -hmm. themselves with a very simple editor tool I'll just put it here inside the code deck. Just, you know, mm. in case yeah. you... Plus one for that one too. Yeah. Uh, we, we need it in white boxing, I guess, also. Uh, that's something we uh, come across, I would say, quite often. And as you said, it's really uh, not no rush, but it's super useful. Yeah, definitely. Actually, always keep uh, in mind the priority of cards. I'm, I'm paying yeah. a lot of attention in putting the cards uh, organized by priority so this is medium these are no rush so please keep that in mind i mean there's a reason why i ordered them like that you don't just drop them into the deck sorry mm -hmm. and then finally there's a couple of shader tasks um, so one is uh, adding the ability to do random tinting based on position the idea here is that for example we have vegetation right and the vegetation right now looks all the same so every bush looks like every other bush but it would be super nice to be mm -hmm. able to tint the bushes uh, a little bit based on where they are in the scene randomly. So add a slight variation of hue and saturation maybe uh, to the color of the bushes and to the color of the trees, but not the trunk, just the leaves, right? Uh, so that's one interesting thing that you can do through shader, but it needs to be made. So I'm gonna put this into, uh, I'm gonna put it into, the effect effects and particles 
I'll think mm-hmm. about it later. But you'll find it there. And then um, masking ability, because if we need to apply, for example, that example, that effect only to the leaves of the tree, then we need to be able to mask the shader. Uh, so this is also another thing. And in here, I provided a little bit of information that you can read uh, later on. And that's it for now. That's mm-hmm. uh, the new tasks that we have. We're going to be adding more uh, as we go. Public roadmap, as usual, you will um, find it um, basically linked uh, here on the repo, you know, in the forum. So whatever you find the project, you will find uh, the links here. That's the link for the public roadmap, for instance. So from here, you can always like reach the roadmap and find the new uh, tasks that I just shown. Yeah. So Chiro, when you show Codex, you show the task that we have done, but don't you think that we forgot one task? I would Which say task? one important Wait. task. Where is it? Uh, it's on the up to discussion for now. Up for discussion. This one, yes. the game title. Yes. <laughs> so I guess it's time to reveal the game title. Finally. Okay, so I'll mark it as done. Yes. And I'll put it inside the live stream deck. Yes. We, we just completed it, basically. Yeah, we completed it, but I think that people don't know it. Yes. <laughs> the okay. time that we are going to show that. And title. Now, time to reveal the title. Time to reveal the title. Okay. Drum roll, please. And, and, and just so you know, just so you know, we were thinking like we should make some kind of graphic, some kind of tech presentation. Yeah. We didn't do any of that. So we're going to just reveal that I just dropped it on you. And uh, the most like uh, less, uh, how do you say, impressive way possible. Uh, we hope you like yes, it because because you chose it. So, you know. You chose it to the community. So you chose it and it. you proposed it. This is not a proposal that comes from me, uh, although I loved yeah. it. But, <laughs> um, no spoilers. So, what's the title? What's the title? And this Three. was the the form that we gave to people uh, ten days ago, I think now. And mm-hmm. the options, the finalists were Chop Chop, Gastronaut, Gourmet Quest, A Pig's Tail, Swine and Dine, Pig Chef, Island of the Lost Flavor. These were the options, and I think people could vote yes. Uh, maximum of three options and then we mm-hmm. you know they, they accumulated um <laughs> somebody says in the chat the name is open projects <laughs> yeah. yes actually i'll add the option now and then i'll give it a million votes yeah. um what what do you what do you think which one do you think it won i'm curious yeah let us guess put your guesses in the chat i'm curious to see as well <laughs> true story <laughs> So that's We're the so that's the lovely. options, and as you can see here, 168 people voted, yeah. um, and I think a similar number of people voted in the first round, which produced these options. Uh, but now there's no turning back. Now you voted. Yeah. I closed the survey, so you can't vote anymore. So don't try. Yeah. <laughs> ah, reveal the votes in in reverse order. <laughs> Okay, Can fine. You? I'll do that. I'll do that. But I need to. I need to hide the, the form to do that. Yeah, you can Let's... show us. Fine, you know, it's like. <laughs> so, what was in the third place? Third place. No, I'll I'll start from the bottom. Okay. <laughs> I'll start from the bottom. So, the very, the very last one, um, is gastronaut, with thirty-two votes. Okay. The second second uh, worst, if you want, second le- <laughs> least voted is uh, uh, Gourmet Quest with 41 votes. And then at the same level on the third spot, there's A Pig's Tail and Swine and Dine. Mm-hmm. And then I'll just jump to the winner. Yes. And the winner is Chop Chop with Yay! 72 votes. <laughs> And then the second one is Pig Chef Island of the Lost Flavor, yeah. which is a very long title. Very long um, title. Yes, that's I voted the, for that one. Which I voted one? for Pig the Chef. second one. Shema. Uh, yeah, the Lost Flavor, I like it. <laughs> you voted Aww. for that? Yeah. <laughs> she was like, we need to talk. 
Well, I voted for Chop Chop, so I'm nice. pretty happy that you won. You know, Chop Chop. No so, surprise for me. <laughs> and actually, just so, you know, because maybe there's people that are not a native English speaker. I'm not a native English speaker myself, but uh, Chop Chop is um, is a joke on. Um, Chop obviously means like to cut, right? To chop uh, something into little slices or pieces, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. It's frequently used with um, there's a there's a you can call like a piece of pork pork chop, so it's like a slice of pork. So it's you know it ties into like the whole fact that he's a pig, uh, but also chop chop is used to say uh, hurry up, like go faster, like move faster and and walk faster. And yeah. I thought it was, um, I immediately when I saw it from the first time, I thought it was a nice uh, uh, option because one of the ideas is that this pig chef in the game, they go around the world. So actually another option that I really liked was um, uh, Globetrotter. And mm. fun fact, the trotter is the foot of the pig. Yeah. <laughs> so the foot of the pig is a trotter, and which is mind blowing. Uh, but then people said like, no, you know, like it was one of the options and he wasn't voted. Uh, but then Chop mm -hmm. Chop came on top. So that was, uh, that was nice. Yes. Ah, wow. Fun fact. Yes. <laughs> Fun fact. And let me see if I can find the first form. Uh, so we had the round one of titles. Uh, and you will see. Yes, you will see how many options we had uh, for the first round. We had 124 responses, and these were the titles, plenty of them. So we, we did like a first round with a lot of titles. And as you can see, Porkchop was like super winning with 37 votes. The second one <laughs> was uh, Castronaut. 72, I think. Oh, Castronaut okay. was doing well on the first round. Um, Gourmet Quest, of course, all the ones that like went into the final. Uh, mm -hmm. And... I think Globetrotter was here somewhere, uh, but he didn't receive many, many um, votes. Yeah. Yeah, it's here somewhere. I don't know. But yeah. he wasn't chosen. And then uh, Chop Chop went into the finals and, uh, and he won. So the game is going to be called Chop Chop. <laughs> That's one guy. That <laughs> one guy commented, Chiro equals culture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> anyway, so the title yeah. of the game is Chop Chop. Of course, it still remains open project number one. So the um, the repo, you know, it's gonna be. It's not. We're not gonna rename the repo and break all the links. Uh, but we're gonna put the title uh, here and there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we can start creating a, a title um, sprite for it. Yeah, title screen. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. We can start thinking of the graphics for the title uh, and, and maybe other things like which font we want to use in the game. Like there's so many graphic uh, decisions that we can uh, yeah. definitely start thinking about. Again, time is ticking. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says more votes coming in by mail. No, let's, let's not go there. Um, Now you have to say chop chop, guys, at the end of every stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we will. That's like the new curse we have. <laughs> do you like the title? Do you like do. the title? You do. I do. You do? I voted. Does the it. does the chat like the title? Um, let's I also see like then. politics melancholic, but maybe not now. <laughs> uh, chop chop with the decision. Come on. Is it gonna have a subtitle like chop chop something something? Oof! Then we need to vote again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please. <laughs> uh, it's satisfactory. I like it now after the explanation. Yes, it's a funny one. I think I think when it comes to t uh, titles, you also need to get used to it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like whenever you hear a title for the first time, whenever you hear even like you hear of an app, right and uh, at the beginning, the, the name is like weird, and then it becomes like you become more used to it. Like how many things that we use daily these days are actually named in a very weird way, but then we just got used to it. 
like even exactly, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, right? Like all these names are really strange if you think about it. But anyway, chop chop it is. We need to move on, you know, can't yeah. like <laughs> think of the title forever. <laughs> Yeah, but, but sounds like there's no surprise in the community, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I, I mean, they voted. I mean, there's 168 <laughs> votes, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I think we have, uh, like, people are satisfied, so that's great. <laughs> Everyone is happy about it. Nice, <laughs> nice. Cool. Um, I think we're there. We're actually yeah. super late. Like, we went on for <laughs> such a long time. <laughs> Um, okay, oh, shall we wrap up, up girls? <laughs> yeah. If nobody has like very final comments, questions that they want to uh, put in the chat, will there be blood on each chop? No. <laughs> Maybe ketchup. <laughs> um, oh my god. Yeah, if we don't have any final questions, I think we can go because we also went on for quite a long time. Yes. And um... you can still ask us in the chat. Um, I think we will stay for 10 minutes or 15 minutes in the chat. And then if you have any other additional questions, you can ask us on the forums and yeah, we, will, we can answer you there. Great. Yep. So just to recap, um, Open projects, number one, you'll find it here on the repository. Um, you know, just Google open projects or find the blog post or the trailer. Everything links to here. Here is where you can uh, download the, 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 the project itself. Uh, here is where you will collaborate by opening pull requests. And then from here, you can jump on the forums and have a discussion with the other users. And as you can see, the forums are quite active with currently 126 threads open and thousands oh. and thousands of comments. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, from the forums and from the repo, you can jump on the public roadmap, which is this thing here, where you can read about the design of the game, about the items that we're discussing. Uh, you can check, take a look at bugs that are ready to be fixed and all the tasks that we need to complete to make this game to make this game demo, I guess. And also all the things that we've done until now. Actually, one thing I wanted to mention about the roadmap, uh, we are starting mm -hmm. to note down all of the PRs. So every item has, uh, not this one, but <laughs> this one uh, has the PRs uh, that basically made it. So from here, you can yes. basically open uh, and you need to sign in to the Unity. No, I need to sign in, you don't. Uh, but you can open the PRs um, and uh, uh, see how people made uh, everything, you know, yeah. item by item, who made it. And, then and I think that was... Yeah, I was going to say, I think this was a request from the community, right? Someone said this in uh, the thread. Yeah. So that's... And it makes sense because then you can see the whole history of uh, how things are uh, have been done. Yeah. You can like trace back who made it, potentially like message them and bother them. Hey, why did you put this? <laughs> uh, stuff like that. <laughs> Somebody's asking yeah. in the chat, how many hours will the full game be? Very little. It's not going to be <laughs> hours long. It's going to be... What do you think? 45 minutes? I don't know. 45 <laughs> minutes? This long? No, I would say a little bit less. Maybe 15. <laughs> no. I think if you were, like, if you know the game, if you know how to finish it, it will take you 10 to 15 minutes to complete. And if you don't know it, then it will take you maybe 40 minutes. That's what yeah. I think. Um, I want to remind everyone that this is not a full game that we're making. This is a... Um, vertical slice? Vertical <laughs> slice, yes. Yeah, here we go. Yes. Um, so we're not aiming to make it like a complete game with, you know, like a tight gameplay loop. We're just trying to make it work uh, and to make it pretty and to make it nice. But we're not um, we're not gonna be. Uh, I don't know why there's there's a somebody sent an emoji to the chat and it was moderated. Interesting. <laughs> cool. <laughs> they ask. I mean the full game, not the vertical slice. We're not gonna make the full game. Like 
if you want to make the full game up to you uh, we will stop at the vertical slice because that's that's the the goal of this project and then you know if everything goes well if we finish on time if we see that it's a pleasant um, process and if you like the process then we're gonna make a new one but we're not gonna make a full game yeah okay Any final Thanks, comments? Shaman Thanks, Amel. everyone. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as usual, all. yeah, we're going to be in the chat for another while and we're going to reply to these final questions in, in text, I guess. And mm -hmm. for the rest, we'll see you next time, either on the forums or the repo, of course. But if you just want to watch us uh, chat for hours, uh, we'll yeah. see you next time <laughs> uh, in two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Same channel, same place. Same time. Same time. Yeah. <laughs> Great. See you, everyone. Bye, Thanks, everyone, everyone for joining. Bye. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.